Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a couple more Christmas cards for this year's holiday card series. I used this super cute um, stamp set from Picket Fence Studios that came out a couple months ago. I think it was a couple months ago. It's been a bit. And I just, I loved this big Santa. And he's huge. He takes up like the bulk of my A2 cards. And I colored him in with some Spectrum Noir tri-blend tri markers. I used um, this really fun picket fence stencil along with some like sparkly glitter paste. I used stickles. I used an aqua shimmer pen. I did splatter and kept it with like traditional Christmas colors too because why not? Why not? So as always, I will have a link at the end of the video to my 2023 holiday card playlist where I just keep adding videos to it as I get them up. And then I'll always have links in the description box below the video to the blog post, the supplies, etc, etc. And yeah, just keep watching and I will show you guys how I made these cards. So the first thing I did was stamp this Santa from the Santa Claus Comes Tonight stamp set onto some smooth white cardstock from Simon's Stamp. So I've got the stamp in my Misty, the cardstock's in my Misty, and I'm inking up the stamp with an alcohol friendly, or alcohol marker friendly ink. So this is Simon's Stamp's Intense Black Ink. And I'm going to ink this up and stamp this a few times. My ink pad technically needs to be re-inked, but I would rather just ink up my stamp multiple times rather than having a ink pad that might end up being too, too juicy because especially with coloring with alcohol based markers, um, yeah, I would rather my ink pad be on the drier side. Plus, since I had to stamp it multiple times, I still set it aside to dry or I heat set it um, because you never know. It's just easier that way. There's a method to the madness. So I set those panels aside and I'm gonna work on my backgrounds. And I finally got my order with the waffle flower grip mat like the bigger one because the one on the right is my original one that's or the one on the left is the original one and it's all stained fine with that the staining doesn't bother me but i've been talking about i want i wanted to have a second one so i can do things like this do you need to no <laughs> i just it's convenient for me so and i love them so i've got two a2 panels on these grip mats and then i have this big this is the picket fence studios reindeer games stencil so I use that over the green cardstock and like I said, they're A2 size panels and I just press the stencil on, the grip mat holds it in place. It's also holding the cardstock in place. And then I'm applying um, holly leaf green paper glaze lux. So this has like some glitter in it and it's just going to add extra texture and sparkle to the background. So I apply the paste over the stencil and then when I'm done, I'm going to take the stencil and my palette knife, clean them off. Same thing with these grip mats when... Um, everything was dry I just took the backgrounds off of them and just wiped them off like paste inks everything come off they just they will stain because it is photopolymer doesn't bother me so my my shiny clean mat is eventually going to be stained as, as stained as the other one not a big deal so I set those backgrounds aside to dry like I said I cleaned the stencil off because any brand glitter paste the, it just dries to cement so I either put it in a container with like some warm soapy water or you know clean it immediately it's just best practice and then for my coloring like I said I'm using the spect spectrum noir tri blends and for my red blend rather than just use just that one marker with the three shades I went in first with this tan extend so it's just a very dark red brown and added that to just the darkest areas and with an image like this it's pretty obvious in the most for the most part where the darker areas would be because the image like has that kind of drawn in so i just followed that i'm not worried, too worried about light sorts light sources or anything like that i'm just kind of following following the sort of visual guide of the image so i added that darker brown color first it just adds a little bit of depth but you can always skip it in the end i don't think it makes the biggest difference if you go in with even deeper shades you you know you can get some really amazing depth but i generally just don't i just don't <laughs> But anywho, colored his whole outfit red, of course, 
and just work darkest to lightest because again for me that is just the easiest most convenient way to color with alcohol based markers however if you want more control lightest to darkest gives you a lot more control it is much easier to add darker color than it is to try and like take it away or you know blend it out etc so I did all of that I did his skin added some pink to his cheeks and his nose and his little mouth and then for his bell and his belt buckle I forgot the belt buckle but I'll come back to it in a minute um, I'm using like a gold yellow blend and then for the his like mitts and his boots and his belt these are supposed to be black and I never use a black alcohol based marker whether it's this one or like Copic markers because if you any area that's supposed to be black if you go in with a black marker you're going to lose all the detail you're not going to see the stamp lines you're not going to see any it's just going to be you know solid black and that's not interesting plus it just it'll look off so I always use grays and it just again it just depends on my mood like this I'm using the ice gray blend so basically cool grays um you know there's warm gray options there's kind of brownish sort of grays with Copics there's toner grays etc like there's many many options but generally I just use cool grays stick with that gives the shading and the depth and then use kind of a uh, very light warm gray for his beard and his little mustache and then a very 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 pale kind of aqua shade for all the trim on his outfit just to differentiate between the whites of his beard and then the whites of this like trim and once I was done all of this I'm going to add my Midas Touch Aqua Shimmer Pen. This is another favorite of mine. This one has gold shimmer. The the clear glitter gloss one that I use a ton. That one is like almost like a white glitter. Not silver and not gold. But this this one that I used on the bell and his buckle, it's the yeah, it's the Midas Touch. I'll have a link to it. It's got a gold shimmer and I'll show it at the end with my flashlight because it's just sparkly fabulousness so I did that first because you always want to add that sort of stuff first before you go in with a gel pen because like aqua shimmer pens stickles etc they will dissolve white gel pen it just that's the nature of the white gel pen so I do all that first let that dry and then I go in with my white gel pen to add highlights I wasn't originally going to add any stickles to this but when I get to the end of the video of course I'm gonna add stickles <laughs> I'm back on that bandwagon again after many years of not using it now it's another favorite so I set those aside because my backgrounds are dry and I wanted to add splatter just to bring in more of the gold after I'd colored the bell and his belt buckle I was like ooh, this needs more gold in the background so I just added my Gonzai Tombi starry colors with the gold I had added water to it swirled it with my fan brush put those backgrounds in my splat box added the splatter and then set those back aside to dry again now fussy cutting this section I kept in and I kept it in real time so I did not speed this up this is exactly the speed at which I fussy cut because most elements of most of my videos I speed up in editing because otherwise we're going to be sitting here all day and while I do love to talk to you guys I don't have much interesting things to say and my videos would be too long and it would like completely fry my laptop and that one is my biggest concern trust me processing large amounts of video footage it fries my laptop in fact it's my laptop's been crashing again lately and oh, it's it's really frustrating anyway anyway fussy cutting easiest way to do this would be to cut with a bit of a border at least for me but cutting on the line is not very difficult especially with an image like this that has a very thick um, stamp line image it's ones that are really thin and really fine that you know it's a lot harder to follow but one like this because it's thicker you have a lot more leeway and I also cut more towards the the base of my scissors there you can see I'm not cutting with the very tips cutting with the base of my scissors um, gives you smoother cuts and you also see me I move the cardstock more than I move my scissors so this took a tiny bit longer than it normally would take me because I was actually concentrating on staying on camera <laughs> because I do that a lot you guys see it in my videos all the time that I'm like wasn't paying attention totally out of frame you know just doing my thing and usually when I'm fussy cutting I, I hold it up closer to my face because especially as I'm getting older you know it's getting harder to see things clearly so areas like that little center between his the bell and his hat 
Uh, you could use a craft knife, but I actually just cut right in between with my scissors and just kept trimming. It was just, that was the easiest option. Or you could leave it if it doesn't bother you. But I just cut in between the two because you're not going to be able to tell when I'm done. And I was able to just cut that out with my scissors. And that saved me from having to fiddle with a craft knife because I really don't like using craft knives if I can avoid it because yeah, I am a clumsy person. Scissors I can handle. Craft knives, just recipe for disaster more often than not. So I just keep going around and I'm just cutting right up to the edge. It's not perfect. And I will actually show that a little in a like couple minutes here in the video. But as long as I get cut everything, you know, kind of right up to that edge, I'm good to go. And again, you could skip this and just cut with a bit of a border around it. I find that's generally a little bit faster. Um, for some, it's not because, you know, eyeballing a border uh, can be a little bit intimidating as well. So whatever works. You can also skip fussy cutting completely and just keep the card a little more clean and simple and just stamp it, color it, add a sentiment, be good to go. But I wanted to do the, the stenciling and the splattering and the layers. <laughs> so I just kept working my way around. In the end, I and again, because I have this footage and I didn't speed it up and splice it and all the things, this took about three and a half minutes to cut this image. So not very long at all. And again, this was me being a little bit slower because I was concentrating on making sure I stayed, you know, in frame, on camera, etc. But I just kept working my way around and then he's done. And then I did the exact same thing to the other image. And then the other big difference or what makes a big difference is coating the edge of the exposed cardstock. Because I'd use Simon Says Stamps 120 pound white cardstock to color on. It's a thick cardstock. But even I can tell a difference even with thinner cardstock. There's that exposed white edge. And to make my cuts look seamless, I use a black marker. You can technically use an alcohol-based marker, a Copic marker, etc. for this. However, I don't like using Copic markers to do the edging. Because alcohol-based markers um, absorb into the cardstock much faster. You know, they feather into the cardstock. That's the point of alcohol markers, you know, so they can blend. So if you use an alcohol marker to do edging like this, if you are not careful, it can, the cardstock can soak up too much of that black marker and you'll get that fuzzy look to the whole outline of your image. And that's because the alcohol marker went past the stamp lines. So that's why I don't recommend it. And that's why I use my Memento Tuxedo black marker. And here's the comparison. I zoomed in really, really close. The image on the right I've cut out, but I haven't edged yet. So I'm just kind of pointing out those little spots, like where the bell is there. You can see the one on the right. It, it doesn't look as nice because it doesn't have that black marker right there where I'm pointing out at the bottom of his hat. That's what I'm talking about where that exposed white edge covering it with that black marker just makes everything look cleaner and more finished. So again, a method to the madness. But for tiny little details like that, is it the end of the world if you don't do it? No. You know, will everyone immediately notice? Probably not. I notice these things. But also, I have been doing this for many, many years, and I, I noticed the little things. But again, do do what works for you, you know? So after I had edged both those pieces, my backgrounds are dry. I used my guillotine trimmer to trim them down. And I also trimmed some red cardstock to slightly larger than the green panels, just so I'll, you know, it'll frame it up a little bit and bring in a little bit more red. And then I grabbed a scrap of black cardstock, and I used my anti-static powder tool on it. And then I stamped the little Merry Christmas sentiment from that Santa Claus Comes Tonight stamp set with uh, some clear embossing ink. And then I coated it with some gold embossing powder, melted that with my heat tool. And then I just removed the excess anti-static powder and trimmed those down. And then I'll adhere them to my cards when I'm adhering the card fronts to everything. And then my card bases are top folding A2 white note cards. So they're four and a quarter by five and a half. And on the insides of them, I'm stamping that Santa Claus. And I used Simon's Cabbage Positively Saturated Ink. So just kind of a light green ink. It's still quite bright, but I'm fine with that because it's just this image is, oh, I love it. And I will write right over this. Like even an image like this that, you know, takes up the card and he's super cute. I will write right over him. Like he's just there is just extra, you know. And then I took this bigger sentiment. It's actually the 
like the song lyrics, which I just, I thought was really cute. So I kind of lined that up just along the edge and I stamped that with Versafine Claire Nocturne Ink onto the inside of both of these cards. And that's going to finish off the insides of both of these cards. So I got that stamped in there. And then I'm going to start assembling my card fronts. So I'm going to adhere the, the stenciled backgrounds to the red cardstock panels with Craft Hacky Glue. And then once those are adhered together, I'm going to adhere those to my card fronts. And then to adhere the Santa Claus on top of that, because I had stenciled with the um, Lux, Lux, uh, paste when you're adhering things on top of like glitter paste or even glitter paper that sort of a thing you either need a really good strong liquid adhesive or something like foam tape because it's just that that texture etc it needs something that's really going to hold it so i use simon's big mama foam tape so it popped the santa clauses up just a little bit without adding a ton of bulk and then just adhered them really well to those backgrounds and then the sentiments I adhered with just little uh, black foam squares and just kind of popped those into place. And this is where I decided, I was like, these Santas need some stickles. <laughs> it just, it must be done. So I used crystal stickles this time. In a previous video, I'd used stardust stickles. The difference, honestly, it's very subtle, but again, I notice these things. Um, crystal stickles have a little bit of a green reflect to them. And that's why I chose it because it just gives... It just kind of ties in with the green background. Again, it's a subtle little thing, but Stardust Stickles would look great too. But I had the Crystal Stickles sitting here because I'd ordered, you know, multiple bottles of different finishes because I'm just like that. So I just added just very thin amounts and I didn't completely cover and I just added it to the his white trim on his whole outfit. And didn't add like a thick gloppy blobs of it just very thin and kind of dotted it so it's not completely covering it. This also makes it dry much much faster like it dries really quick when you apply just thin tiny little amounts like this but if you apply it in like big globs it'll look amazing it just will take much longer to dry so I applied the thin little bits let it dry and these cards were complete and I've got you know that gold Midas touch sparkle on the bell and his belt buckle the sparkle and the texture especially in real life the texture of that Lux glitter paste is just chef's kiss love so I've got my cute little little Santa Claus cards and on the inside he stamped with the fun little sentiment and yeah, that was it. So like I mentioned in the intro, I will have a link to my holiday playlist in the end screen at the end of this video. Below the video in the description box, I will have links to all the supplies I used, a link to my blog post. In the blog post, it's the pictures, picture links, a little easier to navigate. So all that info will be below for anyone who is interested. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs up in, commenting, subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.